New World has changed dramatically since the days of Frederick T. Stanley and his small New Britain bolt factory. The company he founded has grown and prospered, transforming itself into a global leader in tools, hardware, and specialty hardware. Technology has changed, manufacturing has changed, marketing has changed, but one thing has remained constant. Basic values of integrity, respect for people, uh, value for the consumer, and quality being the glue that holds the whole thing together have, have persisted. All the employees were looking out for quality, the inspection of the tapes themselves, the blades, the cases. It's a overall involvement of all employees. Over the years, Stanley has outpaced its competitors by being first to anticipate and meet changing customer needs. Eighteen years before the Civil War, New Britain, Connecticut was a small, isolated village. Its main link to the outside world was an occasional stagecoach to the state capital. But it was home to a growing number of skilled craftsmen and entrepreneurs. One of these was Frederick T. Stanley, who, with the help of his brother William, opened and operated Stanley's Bolt Manufactory. The brothers fashioned by hand wrought iron bolts and handles, and then peddled them from the back of a wagon. Their operation was simple, but it made pioneering use of a steam engine for power, a first for New Britain, and probably Connecticut and the start of a long series of Stanley innovations. In the early 1850s, the Stanley brothers added hinges and other hardware to their product line and incorporated under the name the Stanley Works. At about the same time, Frederick established a lasting Stanley tradition, community service. He brought the railroad, gas lighting, and a reservoir-fed water system to New Britain and eventually became the city's first mayor. Stanley became the first hardware company to sell its products in neatly labeled telescoping boxes. The hinges were packaged with screws to match, an idea Hart sold to skeptics by secretly timing a clerk looking for screws to fit a competitor's hinge. By the mid-1870s, Stanley's manufacturing and marketing successes had made it a leading supplier of hinges. As settlers moved westward, Stanley was the name on the hardware that went with them. The growing list of products included the ball-bearing butt hinge for heavy-duty doors, another Stanley first, and garage door hardware for the increasingly common automobile. While the Stanley Works was building hardware for the world, another New Britain company, also named Stanley, was building its own worldwide reputation with tools. Founded in 1857 by Henry Stanley, a distant cousin of Frederick, Stanley Rule and Level started out selling boxwood and ivory rules, but soon acquired other small specialized tool makers. By the early 1900s, it was producing the most complete line of woodworking tools in the world. In 1920, the two powerful Stanley companies merged under one name, the Stanley Works. <laughs> 